many songs about London, Fox and Hunt were honoured by name. But there isn't a song about terriers, which is laden and the game lost in fame. Nor pedigree are these brave warriors, their colour or rules can be fine. For their bread, for their pluck and their spirit, with a heart as brave as a lion. So always remember the old terriers, protect them from where and from cold. One quality you'll find among them, and Gales hope they call it dead game. Now whether he's rough or smooth coated, the tackle badger or otter or fox, run a drain or creep into a hole, or squeeze through a break in the rock. So to the death on his own, though sometimes he may be imprisoned by a rushing of soil or stone. And then the brave lads of the valleys, to save him they'll toil day and night, and join in a howl of triumph as he blinks back to God's blessed light. So always remember your terrors, protect them from where and from for the love of life, for his master, can never be measured in gold. And on a press famous show down in London, where a lakeland is not worth its name, if he showed him a fox or an otter, he'd fly for his life without shame. For he's not bred to creep or to battle, but to sit on a chair in a house. And they do say that one recent champion got chased down the road by a mouse. So always remember your terriers, protect them from wet and from cold, for the love of the type for his master can never be measured in gold. So here's to our gallant flower workers, not duties perhaps, but they'll do. With gameness they've also affection, They'll make you a pal good and true. And when only your terrier is dying, and all the world about you seems sad, a lick on the hand will console you, for a truer friend man never had. So always remember your terriers, protect them from wet and from cold. Fellow Mall and Working Terrier Club was founded in 1966 by a group of men in a Cumberland pub called the Greyhound Inn at Piker. It had 12 founder members. It was the brainchild of Cyril Tyson following a long unsuccessful rescue attempt of one of his trapped terriers. Four of the original members, West Cumbrians Cyril Tyson, John Cowan, Cyril Hodgson and Raymond Riddick paid a nostalgic visit to the Greyhound and discussed how they helped form the club and their first meeting. John Cowan was elected as its first president. The club's helped members on all matters relating to the working terrier. From these humble beginnings, the club has now more than a thousand members throughout Britain. For rescues, it has access to earth moving equipment, heat-seeking equipment, and a band of willing volunteers. It is respected as the authority in rescue techniques. It is the only club in the land to offer a national rescue service for trapped terriers. The first contact is the area representative, who coordinates and organizes the rescue with the help of willing volunteers. They work in their own time and ask for 
and expect no reward. The club holds meetings, social functions, and even has its own working terrier shows. There is an agreed code of conduct for the working of terriers. It's very important to note that the club does not condone in any way unofficial or illegal working or use of terriers. The club is unique thanks to its dedicated members. It was the first of its type in the world, now copied but never equaled. Early editions of their yearbook are collector's items and a mine of information, including reports of many of the rescues that have been made, many successful, some sadly not. The matter-of-fact style of writing does not convey the courage and tenacity of these men and their grinding hard work who turn out in all weathers and terrain to rescue trapped terriers. This video is about the men who founded this club, about the men who've bred these wonderful dogs in the past and are still breeding them now. These wonderful, lovable, brave, tough little dogs that we all love so much. Of course, there are many, many types of terriers, each bred for a different type of terrain. But they're also bred for temperament, for stamina, for courage, for common sense, a good nose, and for the ability to follow a fox to ground. Some of the breeds we will discuss in this video. Probably the most well-known fox terrier is the Jack Russell, or to give it its more correct name, the Parson Jack Russell, named after the Reverend John Jack Russell, who was a charismatic hunting parson who preached at Swimbridge in North Devon. Now, I was about to talk about Jack Russells, but as you can see, the cold seeping rain off the North Sea has defeated us and we have retreated indoors, but we can still talk about Jack Russells. Russell had very strong views on the size and shape of terriers. He reckoned that a good working terrier should be the same size, weight and shape as a vixen fox, so that it could follow any fox to ground. And he was, when he was reading a theology at Oxford, his milkman had a very good terrier bitch, uh, which he bought from, which he, Russell, bought from the milkman, um, which he named Trump. And Trump was the, the foundation of all the line of Parson Jack Russell Terriers, his famous terriers. Was a famous huntsman and became a great friend of the then Prince of Wales, who was later Edward VII, who used to come and hunt with him on occasion. And I am told that a picture of Trump still hangs in the tack room at Sandringham. How long have you kept these, these Jack Russells? When we're saying that we are, it's important to go back four and five and, and more generations, how long have you kept these? The terriers I, I first had when I was 14, they were all Russell crosses. And then in the early 70s, I started breeding more of a type. And um, fortunately, I did get hold of a couple of dogs that were bred by Jack Price. Uh, I know Jack's into boarders now, but at that time, as far as I'm concerned, Jack had probably the best strain of working muscles that were about. They were good on his finding digging dogs. He could dig all day to them. There was no hunting in, in I was brought up in Merthyr Tidville, and um, there, was, there was no hunting there at all, but. Because um, some boys used to come over from the Ronda and um, used to go up into the beacons. And uh, the guy who used to live next door to me, he used to go with them. So I started going with him and that's why we went to Terriers really. But in those days you couldn't buy a Terrier for another money. I mean they were like picking up gold. And um, I was lucky enough to have a Terrier which came from the Sennybridge hunt. Um, which was the old Lucas strain of Terriers really. It was more of a white telium than anything a dog called Don, and uh, I progressed from there, really, and uh, I've still got the strain today. Well, this is uh, the white bitch, is uh, that all the strain, like, but, uh, I found all the brilliant little workers, and have always done the job for me. It's more on the, the pure older strain of Russells that's just got diluted down. There's, there's lots of people got them now that's not working the dogs, and in school, Instead of looking for a dog like this, this dog that's is seven year old, 
he's worked all his life, he's still working, they'll go to a show and see a dog win a show and they'll use that dog. Right. That's that's the, and the working side of them, it's just getting diluted down all the time and it's getting more and more difficult every year as time goes on. And this is what I'm saying, there's a lot of lot of genuine lads packed in people I've known all my life and they've just packed in because they just can't work the dogs like they'd be able to work them. The late Barry Jones was president of the Fell and Moreland Working Terrier Club and chairman of the National Working Terrier Federation. He tells us how he found Mick, his best dog. Went up to see Alan Timms, Rocky they called him, and um, the dog went in like, you know, like uh, Alan was in and his wife, I forget what her name is now. And, uh, the dog come out like a loose the dog out of the back like and oof, we did like it, I was shot, we did like a dog like, you know. And he said, well, uh, uh, he's a dog like, he said, uh, well, I've sold him like, you know, instead of like been on the phone. Yeah. He said, he's bought him off me like, I says, has he paid any money? He says, no. I said, well, so yeah, he sold then. Mm. I said, oh, I'll buy him off you like, you know, and he said, well, I'll call very well, look, like, you know. Margaret, his wife was named. I said, Margaret, go. Get him out, get him out. Get him out. So I thought, oh, this dog's mine, like, yeah. you know. Lucky for you. <laughs> so I could do another couple of quid on top, like, you yeah. know. It cost me about 12 quid, I think, like, oh. at the time. And uh, that was it, like, you know, I'd got the dog. But he was, he was a cracking dog, he was. You know, he was brilliant for work, like, you know. Yeah. He's a dog you could. Good finder, good stayer. Good finder, stayer, like, you know. Come when called, like, unless there was a fox or whatever just in front of him. Yeah. And uh, yeah. he produced some good puppies. Border Terriers were bred originally in the Cheviot Hills on the English-Scottish border. They had to have sufficient length of leg to follow a horse over the hills. They share a common ancestry with the Dandy Dinmont and the Bedlington Terrier. The purpose of the Border Terrier was to bolt foxes, but it had to be the right size to gain access to peat drains and runners. They required to be tough and uncompromising with a weather-resistant coat to work in one of the most wild and rugged areas of Britain. The name Border Terrier is thought to have derived from the border hunt, and they have been an integral part of the border hunt for over 150 years. Nowadays, followers use the versatile quadricycle. There's a great history of family involvement in the breed of Border Terriers. Families like the Dodds, Robsons, Carruthers, Headleys and Dixons. Michael Headley succeeded his father as master and huntsman of the Border Hounds and kennels the hounds at his home. John Digger Dixon has kept Border Terriers and whipped in for 50 years. Levi Oaks has bred pure border terriers since 1974. The first, the first border bitch uh, was a, a bitch called Misty, and that must be about 30 years ago now. And I went down Gloucester. I won't say the name of the farm because if any people get writing to him, he hasn't got any. It's not that. I know he hasn't got any, but he was a, he was a real gent of a fella. And I was, I was just reading in Farmer's Weekly, and there was some pups advertised, five months old. So I rung him up, he says, I'll be glad if you come down here and take some. He said, I'm sick of them, they're a pest. He says, I, I can't deal with them. So I thought, well, I wasn't feeling too well, so I said to the lad, how are you fixed for a run? I said, it's a fair way, but yeah. Tetbury it was. So he says, aye. We'll go and have a look. And when we got there, there was four of them running around the farmyard, and he he got some salukis, and they were a pitcher. He was a sporting farm. It was all arable, and the dogs didn't belong to him. They belonged to his mother, and she, she'd had it served, brought it down there, left it, popped in the barn, never bothered. And the buggers were five months old. They'd worried nearly all his cats, and. It, of course, he was telling me what they were doing. I'd heard a lot of these tales, what they'd do and what they wouldn't do. But the best of it was, 
I wasn't feeling too well, but the lad was as fit as a flea. We couldn't catch him. We couldn't catch any of them at all. And how long ago is this, Levi? It must be 30 years ago 30 now. 30 years ago? Yeah. Couldn't catch any of them at all. And he's a lovely blue dog, a blue and tan dog, a beauty, five months old. And I, I really wanted this dog. He got a kink in his tail, but it wasn't much. But somebody had bought him and brought him back because of this kink in his tail. And I said to him, I'm not worried about a kink in his tail. Like I said, I said, like, are they a working bloodline? He says, he says to me, like, he says, well, that's the, 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 the main thing is they've got going to ground. They're only five months old. He says, and I'm fed up with me men digging them out. He says, they're digging them out of rabbit earths and God knows what. He says, and we have some badger sets over there, he says, and I shall be getting them lost. Well, it was a bit of a tale, and it wanted a bit of believing, really, because, well, I, I hadn't seen them many dogs' boards that would do that sort of thing. But I couldn't catch this dog. And, and these two bitches, one of them had a bit too much jacket on, and the other one was a bit on the small side. And then I heard a bark in the loop.